I want to welcome everybody to the May 2021 PCTV show. This month we have Third Ward Councilman Steve Kahn, as well as the Supervisor of Planning and Zoning Officer Dawn Corcoran Gardella for Piscataway Township. And we have a ribbon cutting of a local business, as well as the videotape of the swearing in of Chanel Scott McCollum uh, to the County Board of Commissioners, as well as Linwood Rouse, who was sworn in as at large councilman. So I'm out here at the intersection of Elwood and 2nd Avenue, and you're probably asking why Councilman, Third Ward Councilman Steve Kahn and myself, Mayor Waller, are out here uh, filming. And this week happens to be National Infrastructure Week. Uh, this is in conjunction as a national program to highlight infrastructure needs around the uh, United States. Uh, we also, with uh, President Joe Biden, uh, having announced his infrastructure package out there to build support in Congress, um, these are the type of infrastructure projects that they're speaking about where we're rebuilding neighborhoods, uh, roads, and infrastructure needs. But I thought we would also take the opportunity to explain to the residents, at least in this immediate neighborhood, the time sequencing of what's going to happen out here and what they can expect. So. I know Councilman Khan has been very forceful over the last several years to get this neighborhood in the queue. Uh, and as well, you know, we do have a very, we have 19 square miles in our town and we have about 600 roadway miles. Right. It's a big, big town. So if you're only reconstructing 10 to 15 miles a year, you do the math and maybe take 30, 40 years to get to a neighborhood. So consequently, uh, by way of uh, um, history, this area of the town where uh, development was built in the uh, late 50s and they were basically very small country roads here and I remember as a kid uh, growing up not necessarily in this neighborhood but knowing a lot of kids that did uh, this was a very wide open area uh, with a very minimal park as you can see in the background uh, right now this is one of the uh, there's an approximately 1.1 million dollar contract uh, that was awarded by the township governing body to, to start um, the reconstruction, the first two phases of uh, Second Avenue out here. You could see the curbing here, and then uh, next week uh, they're expecting to finish this area up uh, with the curbing and regrading, and then start with the next area. Uh, I think, Councilman, I think I was told by the engineering department that uh, they're expected to be finished sometime around middle of July with this phasing out here. Well, I, I, again, Mayor, I think you summed it up very well. And I guess the most important thing for residents to know yeah. is, yeah, these are older streets. Yeah. And, you know, I'm standing out here on the, you know, on the hard top. You know, most modern streets have layers of, of substance below it yeah these are old streets where they just were plowed over dirt at times yeah a little bit of stone so they're very expensive and complicated projects we're going to be doing one street after another and we're putting in uh, uh you know the really nice and sturdy belgian block which stabilizes the road helps deal with some flooding issues which we've got on a variety of uh, different of these older streets and yeah, I've been bugging you for a long time, yeah. and I know it's been in the pipeline, but now we're really systematically going through the Possum Town area and working on these roads. This year, 2021, is a major year. We're doing some of the major roads. Second's a big street in yep. town. Uh, and over the next couple of years, this entire neighborhood, it's yep. really one of the nicer neighborhoods in the town and one of the older ones, uh, is going to be completely redone with, with modern, uh, roadways and we'll eliminate some of the different issues. In fact, yep. as we go around, I know this neighborhood well because I used to live here. As we go around, I want to point out to you, I know you've been here a thousand mm -hmm. times, some of the little local flooding things that we're going to be able to resolve. At the, the other end of second, there's yep. an issue uh, with the way the, the road is pitched that we're going to be able to get resolved with some of the curbing and the new, new roadway. So I'm excited to see it. It's always a hassle, you know, when it's uh, ripped yeah. up and under construction, but it's going to be beautiful. This whole uh, area in the next year or two is going to be redone and be beautiful, and it's really terrific. Now, one of the big questions residents always ask, well, why, why are you doing Belgian block curbing versus straight curbing? And the simple answer is, well, when we, we bid it out both ways, if part of the curbing in Belgian block goes bad, you're just replacing the tooth versus a 10-foot wide section of uh, concrete. So maintenance-wise, 
uh, over the lifespan of the roadway, it's a lot cheaper uh, for the town to install Belgian block curbing. And I think most people will admit it does aesthetically look a lot better yeah, it dresses it out up there. Nicely. You know, because it's not just, hey, just, just reconstruct it or fix it. It's also, we need to get longevity out of these roadways because I said before earlier uh, speaking that you know if you have 600 plus roadway miles and if you do the math if you're reconstructing 15 miles a year you know it will take 30 to 40 years for you to get to a, a neighborhood and consequently as Councilman Khan knows there's a lot of sections of town that were built 50s 60s 70s and even the 80s where they were not as, as he just mentioned before, we're not built to normal township standards. And now this road is a standard 30 foot uh, length right here, uh, width wise, curb to curb, and that allows access for cars to pass and then if there's any emergency fire equipment that has to get through. So hopefully the residents will enjoy that. Uh, we are gonna spin around this section of 2nd Avenue, which like for a lack of a better word, it's the lower half, correct me if I'm wrong, Councilman. Well, we, we usually call the up River Road the upper, upper half. half. And, uh, yeah, down so this, as I said, is under engineering design right now, and the outside consulting firm should be finished uh, by the end of the, um, end of the year, and then hopefully we'll, the, we'll have this in the queue to put out the bid early uh, January of 2022 for spring construction. So, uh, Second Avenue, as the councilman knows, uh, is the, one of the main thoroughfares in this neighborhood out here. Everybody uses it to either go out to Possum Town or out to River Road. Um, we do have um, the drainage work uh, that the um, council um, it was your offer to, to award the contract, uh, Councilman, uh, here on the uh, section of Elwood and Brentwood, where the town's going to tie in the storm drain sump pumps into the storm drain system and fix whatever curbing that's been damaged, and then the Department of Public Works is going to go in and mill and pave. So, assuming the concrete contractor gets finished uh, this year, then that, that will be milled and paved this year. If not, it'll be spring of 2022. But as the councilman said, we're, we're methodically going through the neighborhoods now, uh, picking away at the streets and working our way to the Possum Town area, which we do have some streets right. under engineering design out there right. too. You, you have already said this, Mayor, I don't, I don't recall, but we're gonna be doing Elway, yeah. uh, Elwood uh, down into the cul-de-sac and Oak Place. Yes. And I know there's a couple of folks that live on, it's a small road, but there's a couple of people that live on Oak Place that I've spoken to over the years. And I know we've made a commitment to them that we were going to fix their road where there's a little bit of a drainage issue, yeah. that we were going to do it. And, and I'm pleased to say that this is the year we're going to get it done. It's going to, all those issues down at the end of the, uh, the street down here will get resolved. No, and, and it's a lot of hard work, uh, teamwork by uh, Councilman Khan's initiatives, working with his other colleagues on the Township Council. Because like there's every little neighborhood in town, right. something needs to be done. And there's competing interests, so to speak, uh, for lack of a better word. That needs to be, but you know, th the main point is is that when this is finished, you'll see we're going to take a look up on uh, Winwood and Haywood Avenue, and you'll see the finished product up up there. This is what the final product's going to look like. So, you see the Belgian block curbing here on Haywood Avenue. Uh, the same thing is over on Winwood, and we did the cross street of uh, Crestwood here and Linwood here. So these four streets were finished uh, in 2020. And uh, to say the least, I think a lot of the residents are very happy to have done it. Uh, yeah. uh, they came out looking really nice, uh, added aesthetically, added values to the, to the, to the neighborhood. And, and more importantly is that it's safe for people to walk on now and bike in the area. Right. It, that's well, the and, key. It, and it doesn't fall apart in the winter no. where, with snow and ice. And as you can see, we're working our way systematically through this whole area. Yeah. And eventually all of the streets in the, in the older section of Possum Town, yeah. there's a lot more yet to be done. We'll, we'll get fixed in the same manner. Yeah. And so what we're going to end up doing is uh, within the next month or two, we're going to take some shots of Bakelin Avenue. We're going to go out there and talk about that on Bakeland Avenue and some of the other streets over in the uh, Possum Town area that are being renovated. I want to thank uh, on this gorgeous April day here uh, in Piscataway Long Stelton Road Jewelry Design Lab for 
investing into the Piscataway business community. Uh, Piscataway is noted around the world of being a uh, high fashion cosmetic town. Uh, for those that may not know, I, I mentioned it to the owner before that we're the home of Chanel uh, Cosmetics, which is the only Chanel R&D and plant manufacturing in all North or South, South America, uh, as well as Revlon and Kiss Cosmetics, and also the new corporate home of uh, Louis Vuitton, you know, of accessories. So what when what woman or guy would not be out without a, a bag or cosmetics without jewelry, right? right. So this is a perfect complement to our, our township portfolio here of businesses within our community. And I know the, the, the county chamber, Millsack County Chamber of Commerce and also the county government would agree with that. Anytime we have a small business owner will, willing to take a risk in any of our communities and open up a business, that's a good thing because small business owners are the backbone of the American economy. It's nice to have these large companies, but truth of the matter is, if you look at the statistics, not just here in Piscataway, but across Middlesex County and the state of New Jersey, it's really the small business community that makes up probably 80% of the economy here in the state. And we want to thank you for choosing Piscataway to be here today. Yeah, we're super excited to be in a part of the Piscataway, uh, New Jersey community. Uh, we, we work with some of the best uh, and the leading companies on the planet. Uh, I'm a gemologist, a jeweler, and a jewelry designer. Uh, so, so we're really here to, uh, you know, help people build healthy, long-lasting relationships during uh, special moments. And um, uh, yeah, we want to grow with the community. So thank you so much for having us. Thank you, everybody, for coming uh, for our grand opening event. And uh, please, uh, please tell your friends and your family about us. Um, I just want to thank them so much for partnering with McFoods and Feeding Middlesex County um, as they're entering into the community and wanting to share and give back to some of our most vulnerable residents uh, who are food insecure. So we appreciate their partnership and look forward to having them in our community. Two, one. There you go. All right. Congratulations. I want to welcome uh, back to the show uh, is uh, Dawn Clark, uh, uh, Corcoran Gardella, who's supervisor of planning and also our township zoning officer that's stopping by here for the May show. And the reason why Dawn is on the show uh, this month is because normally springtime is when folks, whether it's businesses and or residential uh, homeowners, look to do things to their, to their houses and uh, expansion and things along that line. But before uh, Dawn and I talk a little bit about um, what the process is about going in front of the zoning or planning board, uh, we're going to talk a little bit at the 30 foot thousand level about uh, the township master plan very briefly. Um, Dawn, why don't you explain in general for the lay people what a master plan is? Thank you for having me. Um, so our master plan, um, it's basically like a guide for the entire township under the municipal land use law, we're required to take a look at the master plan and do what's called a reexamination um, every 10 years. The planning board just undertook that in December. Mm -hmm. um, very, very extensive uh, look at everything from the circulation element, um, we had recently had our housing element approved, which is also incorporated into that um, land use, um, you know, pretty much everything. It, it, it guides the guide for how you're, you ultimately want the town to, to look. Turn out. And, and also and for light persons, the template of what your yeah. community is. Correct. And there's only certain tweaks that you can do with a master plan mm -hmm. because if you start changing certain zonings with certain areas, uh, you have to watch that you're not impacting on the owners of the property, whether it's in the industrial or corporate or residential area that you're gonna impact that they will not be able to fulfill using their property to the fullest. Correct, it's sound planning. You want to make sure that what is there, what you want to be there works for the community. Um, one of the things we took out, we took a look at was um, the Stump Road Quarter. Yep. Um, planning board recently adopted um, 
additional like landscape buffering requirements for properties that may come in for a commercial use to protect the homeowners, um, you know, with extensive screening, um, fencing requirements, all sorts of things along those lines. Uh, we also take a look at the circulation element. Um, as many know, you know, we promote walkability in this town. We have sidewalks and curbs and we um, want to make sure that the width of the roads makes sense so that we can provide for those things. Back in the day, you would have never expected people to be walking along Centennial Avenue, right? right? And you drive down now and you see people walk, well, maybe prior to COVID, but walking along that corridor to get to the different businesses and so forth. So, um, yes, it, it's, it's, it's very proactive and, um, you know, it really does guide the township how you want it to be. Well, we've, we've basically, uh, when I say we, we as the township residents, um, have over the course of the last 10 years, I think our, our township as a whole has added more bike lane miles and um, sidewalks probably in the history of the all prior 300 plus years before that. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I've worked for you for many years. I mean, even all the planning board applications were always requiring those things of businesses to provide curbs and sidewalks and things like that. Because again, it is such a walkable town. It's, it, it, it were, you got to start somewhere. And that's why, I mean, how many years ago did we begin this? And, yep. and it's very interesting. Uh, and it, that all has dovetailed into um, the whole thought process of a wellness campaign for mm -hmm. people to um, health wise to be able to walk or bike sure. within their own communities. And uh, it's very interesting to see now how we started out in certain areas of the town and now things are starting to finally connect up that developments yeah. are connecting up with other developments. Uh, bike, there's additional bike lanes as well as we have a standing um, with, the, with the county when the county goes in and do a new engineering design plan for upgrading their, their road network within our community, we, if possible, mm -hmm. engineering-wise, we ask them to include bike lanes and sidewalks. Absolutely. I think we've been very, very proactive in that approach. I personally take a walk and lunch. I think it's great. I mean, yeah. it's one of those things just to get out for an hour, get some exercise. It's been fabulous. So, so if you notice, uh, if th those folks that live in the uh, North Stelton region of Piscataway, you notice now you can actually walk either by multi-use path or sidewalk from the Edison train station now up to uh, almost to Haynes Avenue now along safely along that corridor. Sure. I, I do sure. know that the county is under uh, engineering design for that next step from Haynes Avenue to New Dorm Road to widen it out and connect that up with bike lanes and sidewalks. I mean, it'll be a couple mm -hmm. years before it happens, but that whole North Stelton region is really coming flowering into a very walkable, livable uh, right. section of town because uh, of a lot of the activities uh, along the Stelton Road corridor, you know, with the businesses. And and, and, and speaking of that, um, it's it's very interesting to see how the regentrification of the old line business corridor and Stelton Road has really yes. blossomed over the years. You might want to speak to that. So true. I, I don't even recall the date, but many, many years ago, we came up with a redevelopment plan for the Stelton Road corridor. And um, it's really been something. And as you said, I think as it becomes more walkable and more um, you know, attractive. You have people moving there and people are putting, taking pride in their businesses and coming in for different improvements or different businesses are relocating to that corridor. Um, you know, for us, that's, that's the main, you know, corridor in town where we all go for, you know, shopping or if we well, I, I like to dub that as heartburn alley. I mean, they, there's every type of food <laughs> that you can get and you just, so just be loaded with a thing of Pepto-Bismol, but you know, so and, and that, that all takes it, uh, the thought process is work in conjunction with the county planning department, the county mm -hmm. uh, engineering department, because a lot of those businesses did locate, and now that the roadway network is, is expanded and everything, it's a lot more safer for sure. the traveling public to come in that corridor now. And I think that has yeah. been a um, uh, an area where businesses want to locate now because they see the safety in that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you have, you know, the neighborhoods outside of that Stelton Road district where people now can walk if they want to, you know, go get a bite to eat or if they need to, you know, 
go pick up their dry cleaner or a prescription or whatever the case may be. And again, that goes back to just with our going, you know, circling back with the master plan and making sure, you know, the circulation element that we're in line with what the county has and think, you know, things along those lines so that these improvements can be made. And, you know, ultimately we can have that walkable. Now uh, the township government is also under engineering design for the reconstruction of Ethel road. Uh, mm -hmm. And then also Ethel Road West to connect up with the County Stelton Road corridor sure. to, to branch out uh, with uh, multi-use paths and uh, sidewalks along that corridor. And it's very interesting to how that whole section of town now as where the town has reconstructed a lot of the individual neighborhoods where sidewalks mm -hmm. have been added in. And you really see a lot of people walking to the local parks uh, or biking to the local parks or even walking to the local eateries uh, mm -hmm, down sure. the road for them to, to actually use, which is good for the, uh, the small business owners in that, that region of the town. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, the, uh, I know we did have a, years ago, we did have a redevelopment plan for the uh, northern section of um, Stelton Road, uh, which, which has taken a little bit longer mm -hmm. to come to fruition, but slowly as businesses come in and they're required to, it's supposed to have a downtown field right there. Right. Um, for those people that remember the old uh, new market, um, the deli there, uh, now that it's, it's a single family, uh, it's actually a multiplex right there to cover some of our COA obligations across from the funeral home. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're, we're picking away at it. I mean, the county's going to reauthorize an engineering firm to actually re do the redesign of that road network, and it may take five or six years. But um, we, we have worked with the businesses that I guess the thought process is we we're looking at maybe um, pavers for sidewalks in front of that yes. whole stretch there. I know yeah. Henry Hintestein, our landscape back architect, had some input on what the thought processes should be designed. Mm -hmm. We wanted some decorative lighting yeah. and benches. And as you said, we approved those two um, you know, sites over there, uh, which will in fact have affordable housing units within them, but you'll have like a either retail or office space on that first level with the apartments above and um, just the convenience to be able to walk to the to the lake and to, you know, there's been so much, as you said, Henry Henderson has done a fabulous job down there. Um, and you, know, you, you have the old uh, New Market School that's under reconstruction yes. right now. Yes. You might want to explain yeah. for the residents what's because every once in a while somebody will ask me about what, what are they doing there. So they're just taking, I mean, that that's a pretty big undertaking. They wanted to keep the character of the building. Um, they came before us for planning board approval a couple of years ago. Um, you can see it obviously under construction right now. They don't have any permits in for any fit out right now for any particular tenant, but um, you also see them doing the facade improvements to the business next door yeah. um, over there. The zoning board approved perhaps like a, a little bakery and a, a pizza store and things along those lines. So, again, uh, putting a lot of investment into that that site. Um, so, yes, as you said, we're, it's chipping away. We're starting to see a little bit of uh, development here and there over there. And it, it's been great. It's, uh, so I don't want to date myself, Dawn, but I, I remember as a <laughs> very young kid, in the Biscataway Rec Program, I guess I was in uh, maybe first or first or second grade playing in the old Newmarket gym because that's where they had the rec programs there. Um, and in conjunction with that, part of the um, master plan element is also recreation components. You might want to speak a little bit about that. Sure. And as um, as many people know, I mean, the, the town has been investing you know, a huge amount of effort and, and money and time in the park, uh, revamping our parks. And as you said, you know, we're fortunate to have a landscape architect on staff that, you know, undertakes that in-house. Um, you see him bringing up to ADA improvements, um, just all the different types of, um, you know, play equipment. It, it's really something else. Each one has its own particular character. And it, it's been, um, you know, it's been great. And the fields and different things that are just going on throughout this township now and over the years. Um, and yeah. I, I think part of that is I want to give a lot of credit to some, a lot of the input from the residents in town as well as our elected officials, our council members, and obviously our professional staff. That whole, getting back, to focusing right on the northern section of Stalton Road and the Lakeview mm -hmm. Avenue area, that whole area where the renovations along the um, New Market Lake and part of sure. Columbus Park Extension has 
positively changed the entire character of that town. Absolutely. Where now, you know, we have our summer concert series there, mm -hmm. where it was back when I first became mayor, it was a vision to take a dilapidated area and get it rebuilt to have folks reclaim the waterways where they mm -hmm. can sit and enjoy it. So now it is arguably one of the best places to go and get a uh, picturesque picture taken. Uh, I you. know prom is around the corner uh, <laughs> at the end of this month. It is now a must a go-to site that if you're a high school student to take prom pictures, just sure. with the improvements that have really taken place and, and blossomed, so to speak, along that whole corridor. And uh, we're in the process. We, we just awarded another contract for f further mm -hmm. another phase of the renovations along there right. where uh, right by the dam, if you, for those folks, uh, if um, you, uh, just visually picture this, if you come to the T intersection of Stelton Road and Lakeview Avenue, and you're looking straight at the uh, lake, uh, there will be now a step-down component to it where if somebody is, um, is wheelchair-bound will be able mm -hmm. to go further down by the dam, and uh, there will actually be a, a walkway out over the water. So for visual purposes, and then they'll renovate some additional parking there and a lot more mm -hmm. landscape. And I think Henry Hinterstein has plans for uh, another smaller gazebo there, but I, I forget what he had in the plans. But... <laughs> It is slowly chipping away after 10 plus mm -hmm. years of really remaking that whole Arbor New Market area uh, into a, a destination point where mm -hmm. uh, parents so. and anybody, they'd love to go and they have lunch there in the park. Uh, they can walk to the local um, restaurants uh, on Stelton Road and pick their things up or by bike and walk over and really enjoy the, the amenities that are over there that we're continuing to improve on. It's so true. It's one of my favorite places in Piscataway, actually. <laughs> uh, and, you know, to me, as, 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 as the mayor, and I know you as a, a township planner, this is the type of things that professionally you want to see happening within communities. Yes. yes. And, you know, I, especially when we, the, prior to COVID, having the summer concert series where, you would get anywhere from three to 700 people coming, sitting, enjoying music and outdoor provision. And to think what it looked like, you know, right. back in the early 2000s, it was just a rundown right. building there, overgrown with weeds and junk and everything else there. And now it's turned into one of the largest assets within our park system here in the town for the betterment of everybody. And hopefully soon everyone will be back. <laughs> yes, and I, I agree. Um, now, why don't you explain what a traffic circulation element is? Sure. So the traffic circulation element, um, we basically take a look at our roadways. Um, you know, we have different different types of classifications for roadways, whether it's a major arterial, minor, collector road, and so forth. Um, what we've been very proactive about um, is just examining, like, the right-of-way list for these yep. type of roadways. Um you know, again, when, when businesses are coming before our boards, we want to make sure that we have adequate right away so that we can provide roadway improvements. Um, we require them to put in the curbs and sidewalks. Um, so we've undertaken that throughout the years. Again, we took another look at that with our master plan um, reexamination. But, um, you know, we work with our engineer. Again, we work with the county to make sure our master plan is in line with you know, their master plan or vice versa. Um, so yes, we've been, um, you know, we've been actively looking at that over the years, I think yearly pretty much. Yeah. Um, so I guess for an analogy, when you think of right away and improvements uh, for those folks that live in a new market region or North mm -hmm. uh, Randallville area and South Rand, uh, where Bob's Furniture Store is coming in on the old Union Steel site that is in the mm -hmm. process of being built. Um, they, they had to build the roadway to master plan with and Correct. add sidewalks in and a new signalized yes. intersection there. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, those are the tri type of improvements that are, 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 are conditions of approvals when large yes. com when companies come into town uh, to make sure that... Uh, the infrastructure can adequately handle whatever's coming in. Absolutely. Um, you know, and again, that's uh, the, they, you know, we have traffic experts that examine these projects. We want to make sure again, that if it warrants, you know, an upgrade to a traffic signal that has to be done. Um, 
businesses, you know, when they come before the board, they know that, you know, we're going to be taking a look at those things. Um, again, sidewalks are huge in our town. So. Well, in, in that section, uh, I know when I was a kid growing up, I mean, you know, you always, and then as an adult now, as the mayor, you always see kids that are, especially high school students who were within sure. two mile radius and didn't get busing, that they were constantly riding on the sh shoulder or walking. They created their right. own path to go to the high school. So now <laughs> it's, it's not completed yet, but I can envision within the next two to three years that that entire stretch going from North Around Fall Road to where the high school is, they'll be able to travel yeah. on a, a continuous length of sidewalk now sure. to get safely to the high school. Absolutely, whether they're walking, riding their bikes, yes. And the okay. other thing is just for the general public, that intersection improvement at uh, North Ran, uh, or say Old New Brunswick Road and South Ran, where the bridge is, uh, basically that's a million five improvement out there, a million five uh, improvement because it's making it a true four-way intersection now. And that should say, cut down on any, of the, hopefully the, any accidents that may happen there because oh. of the configuration of the roadway. That was a tricky intersection before with that arrow. And yeah. <laughs> and so well, you know what? Right. Ultimately, um, you know, what should happen, and we ha we're working with the uh, Department of Transportation, that bridge needs to be widened. Uh, both bridges, both on Old mm -hmm. Brunswick Road over 287, the one over the, um, the railroad tracks, Conrail. And that, that's considered like an, a DOT uh, freight division consider considers that an orphan bridge. You know, like nobody owned it, but somebody <laughs> built it, you know, you know, one of those things. But, uh. Uh, <laughs> but you know, those are just some of the things uh, that we, we have to deal with as uh, local officials mm -hmm. dealing with state, county, and obviously local and corporate community. So uh, sure. the housing element, can you talk a little bit quickly about the housing element? Sure. So we, um, the, uh, I'm going to say um, the good news is that we have a surplus of units that we were required. But, um, you know, every so every every couple of years, you have to take a look at your housing element and your need. You have, you know, you have a determined need, how many units you, you need to provide and the different sites you're going to provide them for and so forth. Um, as you said, we have several developments, you know, coming through the town, whether they're large projects, small projects. Uh, where they are required to provide typically a 20% set aside mm. um, for very low, low and moderate income units, um, you know, for both people who reside in town and for people who are outside of town. Um, we have always been very, very, very proactive with that. Um, we've always met our need. We continue to meet our need, um, you know, it, whether it's, you know, we have a couple of developments right along that corridor we were just talking yes. about where we have, you um, numerous affordable housing units in those um, different developments. So, um, well, I know, I know Dawn, every once in a while, we'll, I'll, I'll run into somebody, say a shop writer or some other part of town and say, well, why are you folks building over there on that property? Mm -hmm. And I politely tell them, well, we, the town are not building it. It's just that it was zoned that way to, because of the court cases of uh, 300 plus towns sure. across the state were sued by uh, housing mm -hmm. advocates to build uh, additional housing. And this is a requirement of what the court settlements were. And that is correct. So, um, and, and when they, as you said, the properties are zoned for that. Um, they do have a set aside that they need to provide for. And, you know, that's what the developers are required to do. We're required to ask of it. And that's ultimately what is taking place. Um, yeah, it's, so I think right now we we spoke we spoke about the traffic circulation element, housing, the recreational component. Um, I guess let's talk a little bit about um, the the corporate uh, zoning and about like say Centennial Avenue, Stelton Road. Maybe maybe you can give a very quick overview of the types of zoning within the, the finan financial end. Yeah. So typically, I mean, along those core well you'll see along Centennial Avenue corridor, we have a light industrial district, um, you know, and along our old New Brunswick road corridor, again, light industrial district. Um, you know, we've been having, you know, there, we've been doing redevelopment throughout the years. A lot of the times these sites are obsolete. Um, you have new users wanting to come into our town. Um, they come in, um, again, these are, they're coming in with uses that would be permitted within that industrial zoning district, whether it's redevelopment or it wasn't. Um, you know, we have a lot of, um, 
you know, national names that you see moving into the town. And we're going to talk know. a little bit about that a little later in the show. Got it. But I, I think, I, I guess the classic one, uh, two sites um, that we, we could speak we could speak about um, is right now what people see under construction on Olin Brunswick Road. They see sure. the Bob's Furniture Store. Now, sure. the back history on that site was that um, when I was a kid growing up, that was the old Union Steel fabrication mm -hmm. site. It was a highly industrialized site. Um, then went out of business uh, in the early 70s and laid uh, foul there, so to speak. Uh, and then uh, a gentleman bought the property, mm -hmm. took them 25 years to get it cleaned up yeah. to residential standards, by the way. So Correct. they spent a lot of money cleaning that site up. And mm -hmm. um, originally it was zoned for um, about 600 units out there where mm -hmm. uh, to meet our COA obligation. And then, um, and then they ended up uh, deciding to ask to come in and redevelop it to have that, that site, that a logistics center for one company. Now, the advantage is that is, is that it's going to be less impact on traffic on the community because, you know, if you had 600 plus sure. units out on that site, you, possibility of two cars, out of that's 1,200 cars times two trips sure. generations a day, you're looking at, uh, without having a traffic analysis in front of me, you're looking at potentially 2,500 to 3,000 trip generations a day sure. off that site if it was the COA site. And there was a retail component to that as well. Yes. So again, you're adding to that traffic. Um, right, we have, um, yes, we get a lot of, in, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a 600, you know, 100,000 plus size building, but we have one tenant or coming in there. Yeah. Um, as everybody knows, Best Buy Furniture is moving in there. Um, yeah, it's Bob, it's Bob, Bob's furniture. So oh, I'm so sorry. You're thinking you're thinking about Spot. That's okay. <laughs> Freudian slip. But but My that's bones. all right. Um, you know, but it's a national company that's moving Correct. into that site, and the way the logistics works there is that they have everything timed out now for loading and pickups in their employees. Absolutely. It's not like you're gonna have. Uh, employees are sitting out on the side of a road and that's not how logistics mm -hmm. everything's based just like uh ups and fedex where they time everything out when they deliver something you see the gentleman walk up or a lady walk up to a house and the minute that that package is delivered it's logged in and that's everything's timed out for a specific point to be delivered now correct correct and again i mean this is something that you know we had they had their traffic experts looking at that particular project. We had our, we retained our own traffic experts to look at that project. And they have determined those were the improvements that had to be included in order to make that site work. Um, so yes, it is very timed out. They have, you know, defined shifts. They know how many people are coming in, how many trucks are, go, you know, coming in and out and so forth. So, yeah. So I, I do, there are some uh, housing advocates here in town that are criticizing that, 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 component is not going to be 600 units out there, but I, I respectfully disagree when given the fact that we have a surplus uh, amount of units out there, um, that economically this was a lot better fit for Piscataway Township revenue-wise and, and quite frankly, less of an impact on our um, infrastructure whether and or, uh, for lack of a better word, our, our services that the township provides, whether it's police, fire, EMS, or social services and things like that. So like right down the street, uh, there's also another redevelopment site at the intersection of, um, on South Randolph Hill Road at the 287 interchange. It's uh, now gonna be a, a very large national plumbing supply mm -hmm. house company that, that for those uh, folks that lived in town a long time, you might remember that used to be the old Prudential Insurance building there for back mm -hmm. in the uh, 60s and 70s and 80s that has laid vacant for at least 25 years. Sure, and that's, um, what's interesting is that, you know, um, as you said, we have, an, we have a chain, a, a business coming in to that site that is actually going to um, lease both, both buildings. They're going to take the new building as well as the renovated one. So um, this is where they wanna be and they saw it signed a long-term lease to be at that site. Which, which, is, which um, is good for the town because it says putting something back on the, on the tax rolls. Absolutely. Um, you know, so it's very fortunate. That's uh, uh, interesting. That's going to be a plumbing supply house, yes. a large headquarters, because now we already have 
uh, Ar Aaron and Company, which is a longtime company in town off of Turner Place. <laughs> F.W. Webb uh, moved into um, on Centennial Avenue about uh, two years ago. That's a uh, Northeast-based uh, plumbing mm -hmm. supply house company. And then we have Turtle and Use, which is yes. in down the road off of Old New Brunswick Road in the IBT uh, industrial site. And then we have Fujitsu, which is in the uh, Rockefeller site. So, so you have these four or five large nationally known companies now that have moved into Piscataway. And while we're talking a little bit about the Rockefeller site, uh, what, can you, sure. why don't you just talk a little bit about that site? Sure. So that was, um, that was a huge, um, as you know, 2.1 million square feet uh, were approved at that site. Again, you could, you can probably give a lot more history on that yeah. site, um, just being a long-time resident here, but an enormous undertaking um, for them to come forward and want to redevelop that property. Um, they, I think it was Best Buy that was, you know, that that took one of those, the whole building yeah, out there. Yeah, they have like an 800,000 um, square foot building out there. Correct. And, you know, again, you were talking about, you said, fit you, we have... Uh, Louis Vuitton out there, um, yeah. you know, a great project, um, you know, an industrial site, again, just taking it, um, making it a redevelopment site, um, working with the planning board and, you know, again, traffic improvements, working to make sure. You and know, I, I want to highlight the traffic improvements that site. They were uh, responsible for doing the improvements along River Road uh, right there. And then uh, we do, we just awarded a contract for, um, the lower, the upper uh, half of Bakeland Avenue to be reconstructed, yes. both yes. on the Middlesex and Piscataway side, uh, from Best Buy out to uh, Possum Town Road, which is arguably the worst street in both <laughs> in both communities, hands down. <laughs> yeah, and which uh, we're, we're it's going to be reconstructed at no cost to the t taxpayers, uh, so to speak. So, which is which is a good thing. But I think uh, what, what the general public needs to know, when, when these redevelopment sites, especially where it used to be Dow Chemical and had a history of Bakelite Industries and Union Carbide, these, these were petrochemical sites. Yes. And now they're low-impact logistics sites uh, where, that are employing um, a, lot of, a lot of people, uh, great companies uh i know the best buy when we took a tour of the best buy facility for the grand opening there's a lot of robotics there uh there's also the, uh their their northeast repair center so if you have a best buy product that you bought and it needs to be repaired that's that's the site right. where it gets repaired uh for right. the tri-state region and you have all the other companies like kiss cosmetics which was based out yeah. of long island now a national company uh, mm -hmm. That that is like huge, and like Fujitsu, as we we spoke about before, in tandem to what um, um, we we also have Kinkasharo right next door, yeah. that yeah. did did all the uh, in installation, all the positive con train control safety work for NJ Transit and, and other yeah. transit agencies around the country. That that has turned into a, a bright star economically for the township, revenue wise, for all the tax agencies. Yes. districts but more importantly i'm also looking it was like the, the the reason why we were able to build a community center too because that flow a capital coming in to allow us to do that true and as you said bakeland avenue one of you know undeniably the worst streets um you know rockefeller had it they had to take on a huge role for the improvement of you know that roadway um again these are not clean sites. These are sites that it's, it's a it's a lot of undertaking to bring these, you know, um, you know, these sites back to life, let's say. Um, or re re reinvent them because, you know, there's always I mean, I, I guess I guess one of the things that was punted around like five or six years ago was to have it as a tank car cleaning facility, oh. uh, which <laughs> would, would have been terrible, but it would have been permitted in, in that zone. But now we're fortunate enough that it 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 is really becoming a um, basically a model on how you repurpose yeah. a, a Brownsfields contaminated sites and put them back on the tax rolls. Absolutely. So Absolutely. we had a, a couple others that like uh, like Cascades uh, off of Turner yeah. Place. 
took yes. the old Tagusa metal site, right. uh, and now they they they're now a, they make four hundred thousand pizza boxes a day, as well as a lot oh, of the uh, packaging uh, for the uh, U.S. Postal Service here in the uh, New York, mm -hmm. New Jersey, and Philadelphia area, which is an yes. incredible facility, and they have z like zero waste inside that facility. They recycle everything in that facility, <laughs> which which was pretty impressive. It is impressive, and again, it's a it's another property that was you know an industrial site, and we were able to do a redevelopment site, and along with that comes you know improvements to the the roadways and the traffic signals, um, all of those things. So yes, that is a pretty impressive site, that Cassidy yes. site. Um, like for instance, along the Centennial Avenue corridor from uh, River Road. Uh, to Stelton Road, Stelton Road, we're really trying to reconfigure on how that is going to look and dealing with the same current zoning to that effect. We, we've had now Chanel put a, an addition on uh, their yes. site out there. And if anybody's been out there, you notice that they've built a multi-use path in front of their, their building. And then you have FW Webb, which we spoke mm -hmm. about before. They have built a multi-use path. So um, there are several of the businesses out there that were in acquisition stage for right of way out there for master plan with. So when hopefully when we go, uh, the engineering department goes to put that out to bid next year, that, which, which by the way, I'll probably be the most expensive road reconstruction in the history of the town. Um, you know, those signalized intersections will be upgraded to the new federal standards. And then uh, right. people will be safely to be able to walk at least from Knightsbridge down the river road, on um, both the northerly and southerly side of uh, Centennial Avenue. And that, that goes further in conjunction out where we, part of the Route 18 project, it gets you to Old New Brunswick Road, and then we're slowly picking mm -hmm. away at sidewalks from uh, Old New Brunswick out to um, South Washington Avenue and Centennial Avenue. Uh, well, we should say out to Stelton Road there. So, you know, it, it's a four-mile long stretch that we're trying to, to do on it. It takes time. It does take time. And again, just the planning board, you know, and zoning board being so proactive and asking for, you know, that right away or asking for those sidewalks and it slowly does connect up. Um, so yeah. one of the, one of the uh, things along there, what um, economically what we're noted for is uh, we're, we're data driven town where we have a lot of data yeah. centers within our community and a lot of IT based companies. Uh, sure. We have uh, Whale Ventures and DuPont Fabros and SHI and Verizon mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of other companies too, but those have been really the bright stars in the pandemic economy mm -hmm. moving forward. Absolutely. And we were fortunate enough that in our community going back in the seventies and eighties, we have a lot of dark fiber in the roadway, mm -hmm. why these companies want to lo locate here in Piscataway. It's because of the high uh, transmission data lines and the redundancy of power because these buildings require a lot of uh, duplicate power to come into their facilities and low sewer rates, as I found okay. out, because our sewer rates are low compared to most of the other communities in the state. And Dawn, you might want to talk a little bit just very briefly about what these data centers mean. Sure. So they're they're basically backup sites for these, um, you know, these large companies. One of them, you know, we always used to get questions about the digital site that yeah. has a lot of frontage. It's very visible. Um, and always, you know, you have all different companies in there that, you know, all this important information is, in fact, you know, like there, or as you said, through the pandemic, how many of us would thought we'd be doing or even this or yeah. doing, you know, Zoom meetings and so forth. Um, and we always used to hear about that, the redundancy of power when they were coming in before, you know, our boards and stuff, this is where they want to be because of that. Um, I think that, that uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the DuPont, the whale venture site was one of the first ones, um, in the well, state. Was, yes. And I think so, the, uh, DuPont one is one of the, I think top the five whole, of the country for, for how big it is. Agree. Agree. Yeah. So, um, again, and, and these are, you know, these are sites that you don't see any traffic coming in and out. Yeah. Maybe you have a slew of employees a day that have to go in and check, you know, check a few the things in, with inside the building, but they're not traffic generators, right? So they're 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 wonderful for the township to have. Oh, because there's no because there's no impact on the exactly. services and the revenue that we get. As a matter of fact, one of the sites accounts for, you know, the commercial base in Piscataway is roughly anywhere 39 to 40 percent of the overall property taxes. Mm -hmm. But one of those sites accounts for almost 25 percent of the commercial base in town. So that just shows you the financial yeah. significance it is 
financially uh, to all the taxation districts in Piscataway. Yeah. Um, we also are becoming, as we, we did talk about uh, Best Buy before, that uh, another large appliance store, Fisher Paykel, Paykel yeah. on Centennial Avenue, that moved into the 800 Centennial Avenue. Now, you know, yeah. so now we're becoming known as a uh, appliance <laughs> Uh, distribution site, which which was yes. very interesting. So, and we we no did doubt. we did we did speak about Bob's Discount Furniture, but we also have Human Scale off of um, yes. Circle Drive North, uh, which Dawn, you might want to talk about a little bit. Yeah, they're one of those. Um, they're one of the businesses that um, you know they um, that was a site that they wanted to be at. Um, you know, I believe they they may have another site. Um, within the township yeah, they do they have two um, sites yes so um it, it's yeah. just who would have thought that they would be furniture was going to be a big deal in our community you never would have known <laughs> um, but again we have so many right between <laughs> the uh, cosmetics and as you said plumbing supplies hey, by the way cosmetics and... we're on that let's talk about <laughs> chanel l'oreal kiss cosmetics and, and louis vuitton i like that lineup what else do you say? <laughs> yeah. And then we, we do, uh, medical is very big for economic development because, you know, you have Cambridge Pharma, J&J, &J, uh, yeah. you have uh, Hudson Holdings, which is making the N95 mask here in town, and then Haria Scientific, which uh, uh, manufactures all the scientific uh, measurement equipments that both um, right. hospitals use and also um, every type of medical type industry uses their their, their sites there and then transportation we have um uh strato which does a train car um, mm -hmm. uh, improvements and then kick a which does a lot of building rebuilding furbishing train cars yeah. and talos avionics which is on centennial avenue they do mm -hmm. air aircraft uh components and then national manufacturing company which is at the corner of yes. um uh, Old New Brunswick Road and South Ran. Uh, so yeah. we've become a transportation hub for, for technology and things like that. And one of the real fun ones, uh, and somebody um, a while back, a couple months ago, criticized the fact that they were located here in town, Coal Arts, uh, because it was near, you know, it was a brand new building. But Coal Arts, for those people that don't realize, if you have a son and daughter in grade school or in college, and they're actually uh, into painting, like uh, arts painting and things like that. It's a good bet that you're using their products there. No that, doubt. That, that is their <laughs> national North, North American headquarters here. And if it was good enough for Andy Warhol to use their uh, <laughs> products, uh, it's good enough for Piscataway kids to use it. But so you, you do have some um, critics out there who don't like the fact that their oldest economic development is taking place. And they think that housing is the way to go to for economic development. I mean, I guess that's just a difference of opinion, but we have to look, we as officials have to look at what the overall economics are and the impact on the traffic circulation element and, you know, the overall impact of uh, government services right there. So I like to think, given the fact what transpired during the pandemic, our town is in financially in a lot better shape economically than a lot of adjacent communities out there as yeah. you know dawn i mean i was just reading an article just uh, i guess what was it last week that town up in morris county uh parsippany uh, that they're they're bonding out uh five million dollars for operational purposes to get by during the pandemic and because of all the foresight that the planning department has done and the officials here in the town uh to reinvent our economic base here in Piscataway since the last great recession in 2008 mm -hmm. through 2011, we've really tried to diversify what's coming in here in the Piscataway. And that has really, really uh, now looking as a great uh, improvement that has happened financially within our community because there hasn't been layoffs. There hasn't been knock on wood. There hasn't been furloughs. But almost every community around surrounding us has had had to had that financially, but which is sad. But and people need to think think that oh, what the long term economic impact is on our community. So that's an excellent point. I mean, it it is. It, we are so fortunate to have these national companies wanting, and they are coming into the Saturday. And it's been um, through that whole pandemic. I don't think we've slowed down when it comes to, you know. 
whether it was residential or non-residential, I mean, people are investing money in their homes. People, companies are investing money into these new sites. So it's been, it's been interesting through this pandemic. Um, well, and you know, we have to like to rethink out of the box too. Like housing's not necessarily gonna solve all the problems like some people think it's gonna be. Like for instance, on um, South Randolph, South Washington Avenue, next to SHI, there was a, a property that was zoned for, um, you know, zoned for residential for a number of years. And then uh, the person, I guess, who had a contract person, the company who had a contract person wanted to put two logistics building there, which would have zero minimal impact on our community. It's on a county road within a half a mile of 287 interchange doesn't get any better than that, and it's going to bring in revenue into our community. Uh, and versus, you know, if you had uh, 300 units out there, you're thinking a chip, the trip generation alone coming out of there would would, be, would sure. have been more impact out there. Sure. And, um, and that's in line with our conversation we're having the site at Old New Brunswick Road, where again you could have had between the retail component and how many hundreds of units, right? So, um, you know less of an impact with the use that is yeah. actually going to be there. Now, the, the only other thing that we're missing, we, we really need to get some age-restricted housing here in our community. Mm -hmm. We did have some age-restricted housing, but back uh, when uh, Governor Corzine was governor at the time right. during the late Great, Great Recession, they said anything that was age-restricted can now be market rates, and that was the U Girlings Nursery site. So... But we'll, we'll we'll figure that one out moving forward. But I know there's been a clamor from um, a lot of folks that are looking to retire that they still want to stay within the community, but they Absolutely. want like a, a 55 and above adult community or something. So we're going to be taking a look at that. So. Sure. Their families are here. They've been here longtime residents. They want to stay. And you're absolutely right. We will be looking at that. Um, so I want to thank Dawn Corcoran uh, Gardella for stopping by on the Ion Piscataway to talk about the master plan <laughs> and some of the planning and some of the things that have gone on. And I guess uh, maybe next month we'll have uh, Joe Herrera, uh, our supervisor engineering on about some of the road construction that's going on in yeah. our town. But I, I want to thank you to keep up the great effort, Dawn, on behalf of the residents of Piscataway. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Linwin Rouse. I, Linwin Rouse. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution. The Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. Perform all the duties. Perform all the duties. Of office of. Office of, of office of. Councilman at large. Councilman at large. Congratulations, Councilman, for being sworn in. Can you think, Thank can you. Give man. your bride a kiss there. Don't they? <laughs> no. Look forward to doing all I can do to continue mm -hmm. to support the mayor and our township to make Piscataway always a better place that we can live and have all the rights and all the privileges that all the townships that are around the world, around America, rather, that will be still be number one. Thank you for watching this month's Eye on Piscataway, and we'll see you in June. And please don't forget our veterans for Memorial Day.